the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Historically, the third Sunday in Advent is celebrated as Gaudita Sunday. Gaudita from the Latin for rejoice. And so today we light the rose pink colored candle in the Advent wreath, the idea being that since Advent, like Lent, is a season of penitence, it is good for us to have a little joy in the midst of this time that we are to be earnestly examining our lives and priorities, our attitudes and behaviors, and meditate intently upon Jesus, who is the Savior we need, the one whom God sent to enlighten the darkness of our hearts. And so a rose pink candle is a lighter shade than blue, just a little taste of joy as we make our way to Christ's nativity celebration next week. Today for the second week in a row in the gospel, we get John the Baptist, he himself is not the main event, but since the time he had started preaching in the wilderness, as word got out about his message and the things that he was doing, his baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, John became a pretty big deal. Matthew recorded in his gospel that Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan we're going out to see him, to hear him, to get wet by him. One of the first things for us to consider in today's gospel for ourselves is that John was doing what he was doing, his preaching and baptizing. He ate what he ate. He dressed as he did because he was a man sent from God for the purpose of heralding the news and giving witness that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. Yes, something was afoot in the world and was about to break loose. And because there was no way of possibly stopping it, John was getting the word out to anyone who would listen to him that people prepare themselves because their lives, and yea, the entire world, was about to be changed radically and forever. One of the early fathers of the church, John Chrysostom, remarked that John testified to Christ not because Christ needed the testimony, but so that all might believe him, having heard about Christ from a voice with which they could identify. The people trusted John the Baptist's witness. They recognized and accepted that he was a man sent from God. He lived what he preached. John's love for God is what motivated him to obey God's calling on his life. Now, I know as Lutherans, that word obey can sometimes set our teeth on edge. But I would ask that you consider for a moment that for the Christian whose sins have been washed by Christ himself in the waters of baptism and who have received then the divine gift as we have of saving faith, to obey God's calling is not a matter of law, of doing the right thing out of fear of God smiting us, but rather obedience towards God is a great big huge matter of gospel. In today's epistle reading, we heard the Apostle Paul's message of rejoicing always, praying without ceasing, and giving thanks in all circumstances. And why should we rejoice, pray, and give thanks? Well, the apostle told us, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And I would suggest that this is, the reason, that this is reason enough for us as God's holy people who gather in this place to hear his word and rejoice in the gifts we receive from his table because to obey our loving Father is his will in Christ Jesus for you. And again, obeying isn't about avoiding God reaching down from heaven to smack you on the top of your head when you get out of line. All your sins and disobedience have already been punished in the person of Christ 
and him crucified. Isn't that good news? That's the best Christmas gift we could ever hope for. That no matter how much you or I have colored outside of the lines of the Ten Commandments in our lives, Jesus still loves you and the Father forgives you. Yes, you still have a place here in your Father's house where he will speak to you tenderly from his word, invite you in a spirit of humility to repent and make confession of your sin, then use the voice of his earthly servant to forgive you and to grant you his peace. Living in obedient love toward God means living your life according to the Holy Spirit by the faith given you. It means, as St. Paul wrote to the Galatians, to walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of your flesh. Obedient living means responding to the preaching, to the preached word of repentance and in humility confessing your sins to God and trusting in his word of holy absolution by which the Lord washes you up yet again and prepares you to receive his holy supper. Once you have been filled with the sacred mystery of your Lord and Savior's body and blood, go from this place in peace to be all that God has called you to be in Christ. Notice that John did not pretend to be somebody that he wasn't. He was neither the anointed one, the Christ, nor was he Elijah, nor was he the promised one to come after the prophet Moses. And when those sent to question John pressed him harder, he simply replied, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. This was John's witness to the world, and it's your witness too. Having been washed in baptism, you have been given the voice of faith to bear witness in whatever part of daily life you occupy. Like John, you also are the voice of one crying out in the wilderness of the world that you have been given the Spirit of Christ, and you have been filled with His light. So, dear Christians, rejoice always that though at one time you were darkness, now you are light in the Lord. And pray without ceasing, knowing that your Father hears you and he will answer you in whatever way is best for you. And lastly, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.